Now instead of downloading the game from a weird site or a weird ROM version and doing a bunch of conversion stuff, the game is now on Steam as of April 2022. You can just search for the Elder Scrolls Arena and you will see it is completely free on Steam, you don't have to buy it. I want you to go ahead and download this. Having the game on Steam though is not the final step, else this tutorial wouldn't exist. What we have to do now is actually browse the local files. So click the little gear here, go into manage, and then browse local files. Another way you could do this is go into properties, uh, local files, and then browse. That'll open the Elder Scrolls Arena folder. If you know where the path is, you can just go there. Now the Steam version uses DOSBox, which is a DOS emulator. DOS was the predecessor to Windows. The only thing we're concerned with is this little DOSBox 0.74 folder. I will zoom in so you can see the contents of it. There's a bunch of stuff to configure. If you have any alternative to Notepad, you can use it. I recommend Notepad++. It's a very good tool. We don't need it though. The only thing you really need is the arena.conf. If this file doesn't automatically open for you, like for me in the Notepad, you can just right click it and then click open with. If you have another way of opening this, that would be great. Now, first choice you have to make is whether you want to play on windowed or full screen. I recommend playing on full screen. I play on windowed because I want to record the game easily and that's way easier on windowed mode. But if you want to play on full screen, you should set this to true. Leave it like that. Full resolution always to desktop if that's any different for you. Now, the window resolution has to be a 4-3 ratio. The game is not able to create a 1920x1080 window if you put 1920x1080 in here, it'll create a 4x3 resolution that is similar to 1920x1080. In other words, it'll create a weird window. So either use this resolution right here if you're playing on window mode, or play on full screen. The output is up to you. OpenGL has worked best for me. The other options are uh, OpenGL and B and DDraw. I would not use either Surface or Overlay, they are very outdated. OpenGL has worked great for me, achieving 30 FPS, which is realistically the most you can do with this old of a game. This DOSBox section right here does not concern us. If you just keep on scrolling, we can uh, make sure your render is on frame skip 0, uh, change the aspect to true, and the normal to 3x. Now the CPU session is where we really want to nail these values. I would leave core on auto, CPU type on auto, here, cycles is where you have the option between automatic, a fixed value like 20,000, or max. Max will always use the max available cycles for the PC, but this will end up speeding the game up, and the NPCs will just run around on light speed. You won't be able to interact with them. I find 20,000 is a good value between performance and game speed, so I run on 20,000. If you set it to fix 20,000, you have to set the detail slider in the game to the minimum. That doesn't concern you if you play in auto or max, but I have found the best performance with this. Now, the mixer, um, the only thing I would change is preferably the rate to 22,050. I would suggest they always be multiples of this number, so either this or 44,100. If you're going to set this value to anything, let it be a multiple of 22 or 50, else weird popping sounds might happen. If you already have popping sounds, I have a fix for that later in the video. Don't change the MIDI input, that's fine. Now, S Blaster, which stands for Sound Blaster, that is the sound card emulation that this game will use. I have found SP1 works for me. Uh, I believe the standard value is SP16. You can change these values around, try to change them, check what works best for you if you have popping sounds. But the first thing I would suggest if you have popping sounds is to try the fix later in this video, which is a mod from Nexus. If you still have issues and you came back here to fix them, try swapping these values around, but I would leave SB base to 220, IRQ to 7, DMA to 1 and HDMA to 5. I would leave those intact just like they are. If they're not these values, then change them. Now, SB Mixer should be set to false. If you experience any issues, you can change this value later, but for now, set them to false. And OPL rate should be the same rate of the mixer. 
set the mixer rate accordingly. If you have 44100 and you don't want to change that here, then change this rate to 44100 too. Now, I've not really found that this value changes anything, but if you want to have the highest compatibility possible, then OPL EMU should be set to Compat. And the rest of these values should be the same. That's it for this file. Go ahead and press Control S, save that, make sure that there's no little asterisk. If I make a change, it'll show it. Make sure that that's not there and close this file. And now you should be able to just play the game on Steam, launch it with your preferred options, either full screen or windowed. You can see we're running on OpenGL. This is what the game looks like if you run it in full screen with the resolution that I set. If you're playing on windowed, then hit Alt Enter. You don't have to exit the game to change that. And this is what it'll look like. You have this little window here. I find that this is the best way to capture the game if you want to stream it. And it still runs perfectly fine. You can walk around and do all sorts of stuff. Now, if you hate the letterboxing that this sort of full screen game creates, then I'm sorry. If you find a way to play this game on widescreen, then please link me to it. I have not found an easy way to do that. And I personally just prefer playing full screen letterbox. I am totally fine with that. Now, for the next fixes, we are going to go on the Nexus. The links to all these mods will be in the description, so you don't have to worry about searching them and finding them. Now, the first patch that I would want to install is the sound patch. It is a simple sound patch. These are loose files that you can just copy from the zip and paste into your file folder. I will show you how to do that in a minute. But these fix the issues with a lot of sounds that you hear that, that popping sound. I would try this before changing any of the values from the values that I suggested in the DOSBox in the arena.conf file. I would try this sound patch. This is very easy. Just go into files, sound patch, the main file, hit manual download, hit slow download, and it'll download it for you. For the TES Arena refonted, this is a fix that I personally don't like. You can install it because the default font is incredibly hard to read and personally having a bit of readability is very useful. So go into files, go to manual download, and then hit slow download right after, just like in the first mod. The next fix I do use, it's a rather small one. It is the TS Arena title screen fix. It changes from this graphic if it looks wonky to this. That is the only thing it changes and the only thing it fixes. That's it. The only thing you have to do to download this mod is manual download. Now, any of these mods will be installed the same way. Hit the slow download. And then the zip will be in your downloads folder. What you want to do with this zip, you can use 7-zip or WinRAR for this. Just hit right click extract files and then it'll create a folder for you now all these files they have to go to the elder scrolls arena and then this folder called arena that is the root folder where all of your mods will go now i already have all of those so if i try to copy some of these hit Control c hit Control v they will overlap but you will probably have less than these uh, it'll have some overlaps, it won't for the rest. These are the files pasted. These are all loose files. Old games folders used to look like this. The same is true for the title screen fix. You can even read some mods have a readme. This is only one file, which is the title.img, which will be replaced in the same root folder. Any mod that you want to install, if you find another useful mod on Nexus, go into the Elder Scrolls Arena. Ah. Uh, popular all the time. If you find any of these interesting and you want to install them, then that is how you do it, unless the mod page tells you otherwise. For any mod that I showcased and that you will find, copy the contents of your folder over to your arena root folder, which you can find by hitting the gear on Steam, manage, and then browse local files. This arena folder is where everything will go. There's some UI mods like clean UI, which looks like this or intuitive UI, which looks like this. 
I personally very much dislike these. I prefer just running with the default ones, but they are there if you want to. Again, all of the links to everything are in the description. Now, if you have any other questions, please put them in the comments. I will try to address them as needed. That's it for this tutorial. You can just play it on Steam. Remember to either choose your windowed or full screen mode. If you have any other questions, please ask them in the comments. I will try to respond as best as possible. That's it.